Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Taylor and I am so excited that you are here watching this video. This channel is something that I have been dreaming up for a long time now and it's about dang time that I start filming and sharing with whoever wants to watch all of the things that I dream up. So we're actually starting off with a project that I have been procrastinating essentially because no good reason. We get the material and then we don't do it. If you do that as well, just know you're not alone. Backstory. I follow designers, decorators on social media, and I saw a post that there was a lamp in this, this photo, and I could not breathe. It's a beautiful lamp. I was in love with it. So I followed the link to where this lamp is being sold. <laughs> My budget did not meet the requirements for this lamp. The lamp is priced around $400, which high quality products like that, you get what you pay for. It's beautiful, it's well made, um, and it's high quality. But again, with a budget, my mind immediately goes to how do I get that look for less money. So that's what we're going to attempt to do. My first step in the DIY process was finding a shape for the lamp base. As you get to know me, I don't like buying things new if I don't have to. So I started thrifting. I looked in flea markets and thrift stores and Facebook marketplace. And that's actually where I ended up finding this vase as my lamp base. Something you have to do if you're DIYing is you have to look past the obvious and see the potential. As soon as I saw that picture, I was like, I'll give you five bucks for it. And they accepted. So here we are. Join me in my journey to create this lamp out of my vase. As with any project, we are going to need some things. I made a list of all the supplies that I used in this project, but the one I'll call your attention to is the lamp kit. This is the kit that contains all of the components that you'll need to build your lamp. I linked the one that I use in the description box below. Feel free to check it out. The first thing I'm gonna do to prep the base is gonna happen really fast, ready? See, you almost missed it. I drilled a hole. The reason we need that hole is for the lamp cord. We will add the cord later on because first we're gonna add some texture to this lamp. To achieve that texture, I am using spackling. The reason I like spackling for this type of thing is because it dries quickly and I really like the texture it dries with. It's almost like a crumbly, organic kind of look. You could also achieve the same outcome with a joint compound, a plaster of Paris, maybe even a paper mache. I'm using a putty knife to add this backling to my lamp base, but you really can use any tool that you have on hand. Actually, in a couple seconds, I use my literal hands to add this backling. So what I'm saying is there's no right or wrong way to do this. As long as you are having fun, you're adding texture, you're doing it right. We're gonna go ahead and let this dry and move on to the next step. Once the spackling is dry, we're gonna take things outside because it's about to get a little messy. We're gonna put down the drop cloth because I don't wanna get any more paint on my cement. <clears throat> Need to clean that off. The first thing we're gonna do is actually take some fine grit sandpaper to the lamp base. The reason I'm sanding it is because I don't want it to be rough edges. I definitely want there to be texture, but I don't want it to be pokey, like some spackling can be when it dries. So we'll just sand that down a little bit and then we will spray paint. The reason I'm spray painting it black is because colors really pop when you put them on a black base. You don't have to do this, you can skip this step, but it's definitely one that I recommend. Okay, we're back and it's day three of our lamp project. It actually occurred to me last night, I should have done some of these steps before I spray painted it black. So today we're going to make the cap, we're going to thread the cord through the rod, and I'm gonna cut out the lamp cap first. Okay, so the purpose of a lamp cap is to close off the vase. We definitely don't want it to be open. So I'm using some scrap cardboard. You can use whatever you have on hand. I made a makeshift compass out of some string, thumbtack, and a pencil, made my circle, measured twice, cut once to make my lamp cap. I'm gonna cut a hole in this for my lamp rod to stick through and we should be good. There we go. Now that will be the cap and the neck. It's all coming together. That is way too long of a neck. Yes, it is little, but it is significant. I needed to figure out how much of the lamp rod I wanted sticking above the cap. Then I glued that with E6000, waited for it to dry, 
threaded my lamp cord, and then I glued the whole assembly onto my lamp base. When the glue is dry, we are going to do the same process as before. First, we're gonna add some spackling to add some texture on top. You'll see that I use some painter's tape just to protect the cord and the lamp rod. Once that dries, which you can tell when it's dry because this spackling will turn white, we're going to sand it a little bit, spray paint it black, and then we'll wait for that to dry. We are finally painting the base of our lamp. The lamp that I am modeling this lamp after is a beautiful tone. Um, it's very warm toned, and I think that's the style that I'm going to go with. This is a painting method using baking soda and paint. Mixing that together causes a reaction within the paint that actually adds a little bit of texture. To create your paint mixture, we are going to do a two to one ratio of acrylic paint to baking soda. Mix it up, and as soon as you start seeing some bubbles, you know it's ready. I like using a wet paper towel as my paintbrush because I really like the way that it places the paint. I'm using a variety of different tones and shades of brown. We have some warm tones, we have some cool tones, and I really just layer them up, and that's adding depth. We have some bright spots, we have some darker spots, and I really like the organic look that that gives. Paint is really forgiving, so if it starts to look a little weird, add a different layer, add a different color, and that's the fun part about DIY, is you make it whatever you want it to be. Once you're happy with what it's looking like, which I think I'm about done, we're gonna go ahead and let it dry one more time before we get to our last step. We made it to the final stage. I'm so excited to finish this lamp and style it in my space. The first thing we're gonna do is put on our lamp neck. I want my lamp neck to be short. I spray painted it black. I'm gonna thread that on. The next thing I'm gonna add is a lock nut. Thread that over your wire and onto the lamp rod. This is the very base of the socket that we're gonna build. We actually have to wire the lamp. So I'm gonna put the socket cap on top of the wire. So this again threads down onto my lamp rod. I'm gonna leave that there. Before you attach the wires to the socket, fun fact, tie an underwriter's knot. That's what I just tied before I attach my wires. Make sure you're putting positive where positive goes, negative where negative goes, because that does matter. Put on your socket and you're ready. All right, now it is time to put on the lampshade. It works. We built a lamp and I think that just goes to show that you can really do a lot of things on your own. You can save a lot of money by switching your car insurance to guide. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I'm so excited to style it in the space. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Exactly what I'm